Well, good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now, today's video is going to be about Christmas. So, if you're like me, Christmas is a good excuse to have a little cheeky look at any kind of art supplies you might be interested in to give people ideas for Christmas. So, today's video is entitled Suzanne's Christmas Crackers. So I'm going to show you a few of the products that I use all of the time. We're going to start with some of the sort of cheaper items that I use all the time and then go up to some of the more expensive things that are within my favourite products. So I'm going to do one of the messy ones first because we all know what this sharpener does to me when I'm live normally. Now I get asked all the time what kind of sharpeners that I would recommend. Now um, this is a Dahl 133 sharpener. This was very kindly sent to me by one of my followers uh, from my Amazon wish list. What I really love about this particular sharpener is it's adjustable, so you can actually use it for any kind of pencils. It will work on slimline pencils and some of the pencils that have slightly thicker barrels. Now this particular sharpener is on offer at the moment um, on Amazon. It's around the £10 mark. Normal price is about £14. Now, it does work on all kinds of shapes of pencil, so it will work on your standard hexagonal pencil. And it's completely adjustable. This one really didn't need much of a sharpen, but just to show you, so you get a nice sharp point on that one. It's also um, big enough to adapt to some of the larger barrel pencils, so in particular my Derwent Lightfast and my Ink Tents will go through this sharpener really, really nicely. You get a very, very nice point on there. And it also works really, really well on some of the more slimline barrel pencils like Prismacolors. This is one of my newbies that I haven't used yet. So just give it a good, a good go through the pencil sharpener and we get ourselves a nice sharp point with that one. Now, the good point about this sharpener is it is completely adjustable. So if you want a more um, sort of blunt end to your pencil, you can adjust this little wheel in this direction and vice versa. If you want a bit of a sharper point, maybe on your polychromos pencils or Prismacolor in my case, you can twizzle this little gizmo this way and it will sharpen the point for you. This has been um, one of the best things that I have had and I use this all of the time. Um, probably been going with this for near on a couple of years and I haven't had to replace it. The only thing they do suggest is that you put a pencil with normal graphite through it um, every so often just to keep the barrel inside um, nice and clean and, and working nicely. Now it has a little collection tray at the bottom for all of your pencil trashings. This one sometimes decides to dump pencil trashings on me when I'm live on air. But I have a handy little gizmo to deal with that problem, which I'm just going to show you. So I'm just recreating the, the great pencil trashings moment here. Let's pop him to the side. Now what I do have is a very small little desk hoover called a Teehoo desk hoover. That's Catherine just dropping in. It's typical, isn't it? We're expecting deliveries today and I'm like, it won't be till this afternoon. We're all good to go. But no, they're at the door now. <laughs> you can't make it up, can you? So this is our little um, desk hoover. Now, this at the moment is around the £11 mark on Amazon. It's completely battery operated and it's really, really good for clearing up any of these little bits and pieces of pencil dust and trashings that you have when you're doing your colouring. I'll just show you how quick and easy it is. There we go. Keeps them all in here and you can just empty it. It takes a couple of AA batteries, but if you don't have one of these in your colouring kit, this would be a really, really nice stocking filler. So still on the subject of sharpeners, the other one that I use, and you notice I did the hoover in between because I knew that the doll would make a bit of a mess on the desk. <laughs> the other sharpener that I use all the time is this little Faber-Castell Trio sharpener. Now I find this particularly good for Prismacolor pencils 
So if, like me, you have suffered pencil breakage uh, with these, what you can do is use the colour grip end to sharpen your pencil. And what it does is it changes the shape of the tip and it usually stops the breakage. So you can see one that's gone through the dial, so that's nice and long and pointy. I have um, a very teeny tiny pencil here, my golden rod, which is very well used. Now you can see I've had lots of breakage issues with this one. It's been pretty consistent all the way down the barrel, to be honest. Let me just zoom us in very slightly more. Now, if I sharpen it with this end here, it's going to go long and pointy. So this is a good sharpener. If you don't have the dial 133, this one will give you a nice tip on your pencil. However, if you're having breakage issues like I've had with this one, you switch over to the colour grip end and I'll just show you how it changes the shape of the tip. I'm hoping that it's not going to uh, collapse with me trying to do this with it because this is a particularly dodgy pencil that I've chosen to try and show you. So if I show you the two side by side, instead of going for long and pointy, it kind of goes for short and pointy. And what I find with this little sharpener is it does just stop that breakage going down the barrel. So if you sharpen it with one of these for two or three uses, you usually find that it's, it sort of gets its, uh, its life in order and stops the breakage, which we all find so annoying. Now, these little sharpeners um, today on Amazon, they are around £5.85. Um, prices sort of as at the 2nd of December. If you're in the UK, I generally get these from WH Smiths. They are around £3.50 to £4, usually slightly cheaper than Amazon. Um, but yeah, the price sort of for everybody else on Amazon at the moment is around the £6 mark. So that's my favourite sharpeners that we've gone through. Something else that I wanted to show you is the eraser that I use. So... Some of you will have seen me use this live before. This is the Derwent battery operated eraser. You can get a rechargeable one of these with a USB, but the price point is very slightly higher. This is just operated with a couple of batteries, the um, AAA batteries there, so just two. And you can buy it with a refill as well. Why can I not get the battery case back on? There we go didn't click it quite into the little guide rails so with this you buy it with um, a set of refills comes with it so you get a lot of eraser for each time now as you use them down I keep all of my little teeny tiny bits where I've swapped the eraser over because if you pop one of those a bit further down the barrel it just helps you to get the most out of the little erasers you're using because as you put the pressure on the page this, of course, does move down this barrel and it gets to the point where it's completely hidden by the silver bit, which means you're going to leave some pretty horrific marks on your page. So the tip is easily removable and then it just erases for you. So if I just show you um, on a piece of paper, I've got a piece of slightly thicker paper out for, for this. So I'm just going to use um, that Prismacolor that I've just sharpened because I've got it next to me. So we just do a, a reasonable area here because this will lead quite nicely into um, another little product that's very, very reasonable. that I do use all of the time when I'm doing backgrounds. Now, those of you that are on my channel regularly will know that I actually loathe doing backgrounds. I am a consummate background dodger, but you can do a very quick and easy bokeh, bokeh, I don't know how you pronounce it, background using this little gizmo and what I'm going to show you in a second. So there's a nice little pop of colour down. Now what you will need to do with this eraser if you purchase one of these, the last thing I used was blue. So if before applying this to your page, clean your eraser on a spare bit of paper which I'm just going to actually, let me just swap the tip over completely because these are one of the um, the little tinky ones that I'm using up at the moment, which is probably not the best thing to be trying to show you guys with. So I'm just going to grab these little, these little ones out of here, pop them to the side and let's put a brand new refill in and then it's clean anyway. 
there we go so we have a, a nice brand new refill in there so do clean the tip if you're going to be using um, this between different projects because you may or may not be able to see we've just got a little bit of blue residue off the tip there and this will work on oil based and wax based pencils you will find it won't lift all of the pigment completely it will leave you with the ghost of a bit of pigment on the page but if it's a subtle bit of line correction that you're wanting to do for example the edges of this are quite precision probably need some new batteries in this actually so it will let you just tidy up the lines now you can use this to make different effects for fur maybe if you wanted to lift a bit of pigment but what i like to use it for is the bokeh background so i'm just going to get rid of all of those trashings this is where my uh, my little friend that i showed you a moment ago comes in very handy there we go so this little eraser let me tell you the price before i forget so for this little gizmo with refills it's around nine pounds and ten pence on amazon uk um, today now what i use it with to make my circle backgrounds is this set of circle templates so let me zoom out now you can get these sets from anywhere from a couple of pounds up to about £10 depending on what you want to spend. This is a set of three that I have got and what it does is it gives you different sized, a little ruler on the end and then different sized circles with all of your markers. So if you are adding your own artwork to things you can use these circle templates um, like Johanna Basford has shown us how to draw in Inky Wonderlands, you can use this as an outline for flowers and such like. You get varying sizes in the circles. It goes from a three millimetre one, right the way at the bottom there, right up to the biggest one here, which is like a 70 um, millimetre. Now, if you're doing a bokeh background, bokeh, bokeh, I don't know how you pronounce it. Somebody will no doubt correct me in the notes, but you know what I mean. Let me zoom in. You can use this as a little circle template with your eraser. So I'm just going to go for the 10 mil one because it's nice and big for the purposes of the video. So if you've done a background where you've maybe done a couple of colour gradient perhaps of different colours, you can use your eraser, hold your template in place. Just rotate this around the inside of the shape. like so and then that will actually lift circles for you and then if you're doing other shading of other colours you can obviously correct that slightly if you want to um, remove a little bit more once you've got rid of the circle template just using the rubber there as a guide If you don't want to buy circle templates, you can use the, the eraser to just do your own circles. So you can hold it sort of perpendicular to the page, just apply it and have slightly looser circle shapes. It will remove pigment to make like a simple background. So the um, page that you've seen me do in Rooms of Wonder recently with the, the bees and the honeycomb, this is how I did the um, circle effect on the bokeh background. It was just three blues um, graduating the shading and then randomly putting these circles into little places. So it can be a very, very quick way of creating a background. Let's just whip the hoover out again. So one thing with this eraser is that the um, when it is rubbing things out for you, um, it does go at 50 million miles of an hour in multiple directions. So the last time that I used this on the sofa, I did look like um, a snow queen because I was covered in bits. <laughs> so just be mindful that um, it's a wonderful eraser. It does make things kind of ping off though. So you may be better using this at a desk or something because it can be a bit tricky otherwise. But to go back to those um, templates, this is a set of three that I've got. The one that I don't use terribly often is this one with the ovals on. Never really found a use for that one. But I use these circular ones all of the time. Um, so quite a good thing for you to have in your toolkit. 
So that's some of the um, sort of staple bits and pieces that I use. So while we're sort of on the theme of colour and equipment, let's look at pencil cases. So I have a lot of pencil cases by this particular brand here, which is BT Sky. So just write that down for you on a piece of paper. I will pop some links in the description below for some of these products. They are um, Amazon affiliated links. Um, they generate a tiny, tiny amount of commission for me at no extra cost, basically to the consumer if you purchase through them. So this is the make, BT Sky. Now they make um, pencil cases in various different sizes. So I think the smallest they do is like a 72, which is this one. And it goes right up to some at DAF like 300 pencils per case. Now I use these ones all of the time for most of my pencils because, you know, when they arrive in a tin, it can be really fiddly if you've got trays that you're balancing things on. With these pencil cases, everything stays put. So the cover is nice and padded, both sides. And what I love about these is you have single ring um, holders for each pencil. So some pencil case brands you will find um, have just these loops where you can put three or four pencils in per loop. Now, for me, um, that's not ideal because I find that it actually damages the, the tips of the pencils because if you're wrestling to get them in and out, um, yeah, it's just a nightmare. Whereas with this... Everybody's got their own space, it stays put. Um, now I spread my Prismacolor across two of these cases. And although it says uh, 72 set, because you do have these ring loops at the front of the case, you can add up to another six pencils in. So I have um, two of these for Prisma, half in one, half in the other, and it gives me plenty of space for spares that I'm using. So this is the 72, and at the moment, um, I think this particular fabric one is around the £12 mark on Amazon. Um, that varies because they do about a gazillion different colours and designs. So this is the blue star one. I also have the 120 pencil case, which holds my um, Derwent Lightfast, so I'll show you a different one. This sort of has more of like a PU... Um, fabric feel to it it's shiny rather than um, proper fabric so the um, this is the 121 which is about 15 pounds roughly on Amazon so my my Derwent light fast sit really nice in here and I've obviously then got a bit of spare room here for you know when things are starting to get a little bit short like these ones are if I get myself some spares and again single ring loops for each pencil so there's no breaking tips when you're trying to fight to get them in a space that can hold three some of them are out at the moment because of the page that i'm working on just now but again you get your um three ring holders here so if you had a set that was slightly more than 120 you would have room for some spares in here for different colors and things so really really good pencil cases um i have a whole shelf of these with different pencil sets in really good if like me you like to take your pencils away when you're traveling because it's nice and padded everything is nicely protected the zippers are usually working really nicely um while we're on the subject of pencil cases the other ones that i use all the time are these ones by kipling so this one is um, a kip large kipling pencil case that's meant for 100 pens or pencils so I have two of these and what I use these for is, is like I call them my project cases. So if I'm in the middle of doing a live stream for you guys and I've done some colour planning beforehand, I'll always have a project case on the side with the colours in that I'm using at any one time. So you get a, a double row, um, again, of single loops to hold your pencils. And then you have a section underneath where you can store everything else. So this is one of my newer ones. I've only got one page on the go there now, which is why this one isn't full. I'll show you my pink one, which is full. Well, it's not full, it's got bits and bobs in. So this is the pink version. So it comes in different colours. As with all Kipling bags, if you're familiar to the brand, you'll know that different colours go for different prices, some kind of silly money, some not so. 
um, the pink one and that one I've just shown you are around the £30 mark on Amazon at the moment but they do have them sort of regularly discounted and you may even get them um, cheaper through Kipling's website anyway. And as you can see in here, um, these are the light fast I'm using at the moment. I always keep my black and white Prismacolors handy no matter what I'm working on. Well used as you can see. And then underneath I have bits and bobs for everything else. So my Q-tips or cotton buds if you're in the UK. When I'm using my acrylic paint pens. A writing pen for when I'm doing my journaling of the colours I've used my clicky pencil. This is for emptying my um, Dial 133. I use it to just brush the pencil dust away. Eraser, new leads, bit of rubbish that didn't need to be in there. But normally um, this is where my little battery operated eraser lives along with the refills. So it sits really nicely in the bottom of here along with anything else that you might use regularly really. This is always next to me when I'm colouring in the evenings and whatever colours I'm using sit nicely in the top so I don't have to keep nudging the different colours in and out of the bigger pencil cases which I've just shown you. So I really do like um, these. I'm a real, real Kipling fan. I've got Kipling bags for most occasions so of course I had to have the pencil case didn't I? <laughs> so that's one of the slightly more expensive things I'm going to show you today. Moving on to um, something else that I use all the time in my colouring kit, a colour wheel. Now we did a bit of colour theory um, on a page in Worlds of Wonder a few months ago. So if you are looking for information on colour theory and how to use a colour wheel, do scroll down my other videos where you'll find a full page tutorial that goes through the process of choosing different colours. Now, believe it or not, um, I don't actually tackle pages where I instantly know what colour I'm using with what. Um, I don't. It doesn't always come naturally to me. I do get stuck like everybody else does. This has really been quite revolutionary. Now these colour wheels vary. I've gone for the large size one. So this one is around, let's just grab a ruler. I can show you. Okay, so this one is around the 23 centimeter um across ways you can get these in a pocket size which is obviously quite a bit smaller the price you pay varies based on which one you go for this one was under 10 pounds when i bought it on amazon i think it was around maybe like the five or six pounds mark and it's a double-sided one so this will tell you of all your main colors and color spectrums what will happen if you add certain shades to it so for color mixing so you can rotate this so adding red to blue green gives you purple blue and yellow gives you green and so on it will also give you a clue on which kind of shade to use if you're wanting to maybe add shadows in so for example if you've got some um green leaves just for argument's sake and you're wanting to maybe add a little bit of shadowing where those leaves have overlapped this will show you what kind of tone you would get by adding these colours into green, for example. So if you're using your Prisma colours, you might look at your warm or your cold greys here, see which one fits these. And again, you've got the full spectrum of the greys here and it will give you a clue of, of what kind of shade you would achieve by adding lighter greys, darker greys, black. The side that I use the majority of the time is this one. So what this side explains is the different relationship of colours one to another, which will be complementary, which ones will be split complementary. So, for example, as you work your way around the colour wheel, if you started here, say, with violet, instantly um, what will go with violet is the ones either side and even two or three either side. It will also show you with these symbols in the middle what a split com a complementary colour is, beg your pardon. So purple and yellow go very well. It will show you split complementary. So you may have a page where you have done green leaves and purple flowers, and you may be wanting to know what else you can add in to spice the page up a bit. Well, if we use the colour wheel, orange would work with that. Yellow would work with that. 
um, and so on. And so you can move this around and it will give you the idea for most things, what is complementary, split complementary. So if you're in the middle of a page where you're getting really, really stuck for colour choices, this is a very, very inexpensive tool to have. And once you get the hang of actually using it, it's revolutionary. You know, if you don't have the pennies for a colour wheel just now, um, most people in the world are struggling at, at the moment um, with the cost of living, etc. You can just look on Google. You can find photographs of these colour wheels and you can just look at the photos for reference. But if um, anybody's looking for stocking fillers, a colour wheel is a really, really cool thing to have. So let's talk about pens. So I'm just whoop, dropping my circle templates on the floor. Let me just retrieve that. Find my bits of paper. Now you guys know that I absolutely wax lyrical about Pentel pens. Why do I wax lyrical about them? Purely because they are the most sparkliest, loveliest pens that I've ever used and I've used quite a few different ones. They never let you down in terms of um, ink flow. Sometimes they need a bit of a tap to get them going if you haven't used them for you know a few days. But the beauty of them is you get different shades depending on whether you're putting them on white or black. They come in brush pen version. So I'm just going to show you a couple of my favourite colours of these pens and also the brush pens so that you can see how lovely they are. So I'm just going to grab a couple of different colours. Um, just make sure that's the no, that's not the silver. Let me just grab the silver one. That's the one. So you get two different kinds of um, these pens. So hold them both up. So you get the dual metallic and there are 12 colours in this range. And you also get the pastel version. And this is a set that has eight different colours. Main differences between them, the pastel set will have different, like a base colour and then different glitters running throughout. So this one, blue grey with metallic blue and silver. These ones, the dual metallic, um, let me grab one of the two tone ones because it's easy to explain. They look different depending on whether you're using them on a white background or a black background. So you will theoretically get two colours in one pen here. So I'll just show you a couple of examples of the classic ones and a couple of examples of the pastel ones. Let me just grab... Um, where's the orange one gone? I was using that the other night. Here we go. So if we use this um, green and metallic blue one, for example, let's just zoom in very slightly here. So one white, it comes out as green. And on black, it has more of a blue hue. So you can see subtle differences there. I'll show you um, still in the dual metallic one. So this is the orange with metallic yellow. So you can see both of the glitters running through, whether you have it on white or black, but it will give you a slightly different look. So I know some of you, um, like myself, if you've got any Maria Troll books, she does some lovely pages that have the black backgrounds. You could perhaps sparkle things up a little bit by using these pens on, because you will get a really nice look to them. So another one in the dual metallic range. So this one is blue with gold running through. One of my absolute favourites. I adore this one. The blue is beautiful. So again, we'll do that on both sides. And then I will flash them under the camera for you so you can see the differences. So I'll show you a couple of the um, pastel sets now that have the different glitters running through. So this one is light violet base with a metallic red and blue running through. Don't know if these look different on the black page. We'll try it out and see. So I haven't used this one for a little while, so just encourage it by just giving it a gentle tap and it just gets the uh, rollerball moving again. I do recommend that you store these tip down and don't store them on the side because they do um, struggle to get going if you've had them on, on the side for a period of time. 
So we'll do another one in the pastel. So this is that blue grey with blue and silver running through. Another one I haven't used for a little while, so we just give it a little tap on the page. So this colour is beautiful, especially if you're doing um, Christmas colouring at the moment. Really nice to maybe outline snow with, add details to snowmen, um, parcels. Beautiful colour. And while we're on the Christmassy theme, I'll show you the two that I tend to use the most of, which is in the Ordinary Dual Metallic set, Silver and Gold. I know you use an awful lot of these in my uh, colouring. So this won't look any different across the white and the black because it's only the one colour. But I'll just show you how beautiful it looks on the black as well. And also the gold one. So these sets at the moment, um, you can, they're quite flexible actually with what you can buy. So if you want to buy the whole set of sort of standard eight colours of the classic range at the moment, it's around £13 at the minute. And that price does fluctuate. Same for the pastel set. You can also buy just the gold and silver in a set of two. You can buy, um, there's like a set of four, which is the extra four colours to make it up to 12. And that's around sort of five or six pounds as well, depending on what you're wanting to get. There are some sellers on Amazon that will do these singles. So I've ordered um, like a set of three of just these, for example, because I use this colour all the time. But let me just show you under the hopefully the lights picking that up so you can see the difference between the white and the black paper there so pretty and i'm just going to show you the brush pen version as well so you can get the metallic ones in a brush pen so they do the same standard eight colors as in the pen version but they have a really fine tip brush which lets you be a little bit more flexible with what you're using them on and i haven't used these for a while so i may need to just prime them if you haven't used these pens for a little while i would suggest you prime them on a spare piece of paper and not your coloring so that things don't go all blobby and horrible i haven't used these for quite a few weeks so let's just see whether they're still moist which they are so you can see how thin you can get with the tip of that brush and then with a bit more pressure a thicker line so if you're into lettering which by the way I won't be demonstrating because my lettering is shocking <laughs> you can probably letter with these really nicely so that's the gold um, I will show you my favorite which is this bluey purple one so again, I haven't used this one for a little while, so let's see how moist it's stayed. Yeah, that needs priming a little bit, I think. So to prime it, you just push this little button. We're going to do that over another area of paper that just gets some ink coming down the brush. So a very, very gentle push on the end there. Don't go bonkers with it. And then we have much, much better ink flow there. And as you can see with these brushes, you can have the smallest of lines or if you're into lettering you can change the stroke on the brush my mind is into lettering the, the, the body is just not willing <laughs> i just can't do it <laughs> let me show you the green one as well so let's just prime the end slightly tiny little touch just keep you can just see the paint flowing down the brush there and again, beautiful. And look how thin you can get the line with those. Now, the full set at the moment on Amazon is um, just shy of £38. And that is for a set of eight different colours. So as well as the ones that I've just um, demoed for you, you get another um, bluey one. You also get... Uh, like it's a black and red one. I'll show you this one because it's one of the more unusual colours. So this will look almost black on white paper, but look how shiny that red is on black. You get so you, these colours are the exact same shades that you would get in the pen equivalent. 
So whatever you see here, this one, for example, the black and red one in the dual metallic brush, you also get it in the pen version as well. So it might be if you like the colours, but the budget won't allow for the brush pens at the moment. Start with the actual pens instead. And then you get an orange and a pink. Well, you've seen the orange, I'll show you the pink. That's the pink. And you get a purple as well. Don't know if this is the one that I've already shown you. It might be, possibly. Yeah, you can tell it's my favourite, can't you? I default back to it every time. And you get a silver, which will look exactly the same as that silver there, which I'll show you. I'll just do a little circle. So exactly the same product, just a slightly different format to use. Um, you know, I know I use these Pentel pens an awful lot and I kind of bang on about them an awful lot, but it's purely because they are the sparkliest, loveliest pens that I've ever used. So you will always see them in my colouring. So just to show you how much sort of sparkle that they do add to colouring, I've used them on this page, not the brush pens, the normal pens. And you just see the, the sparkle that it's added to some of these areas on this colouring that I'm in the middle of. They're just lovely. A little bow on the bunny rabbit look. That's a nice one. That's pink that's got like a green glitter running through. So yeah, just appreciate the bling. Isn't it lovely? So that's one of my favourite, favourite, favourite products, which most of you who are on here all the time will know. Now, a um, couple more sort of expensive projects if your um, loved ones are looking to maybe spend a little bit more money on like a a bigger gift for you guys this year. Let's talk about Derwent Lightfast. So I have the set of 100 of these pencils. Now, um, the lightfastness of these is such that the colours won't fade away for 100 years. That's what they say on their website. Now, I was a little bit sceptical about purchasing these because the price point of them is um, at the high end of um, pencils, particularly if, like myself, you're using them for sort of art and colouring books and things. However, since I got these a few months ago, they actually haven't been back in the cupboard because what I find with these is they are comparable to Prisma in terms of shades that are in this range are not in Prisma and vice versa. So it's really sort of diversified um, some of the colour blend uh, combinations that I can choose, particularly with some of these more earthy toned pencils here. Now, these are actually oil based, but you can use them with with other brands, um, these light fast pencils. They're very, very soft to use. They are kind of, for me, sit between maybe a polychromos and a Prismacolor pencil. Very soft, very blendable very easy to use with other pencil ranges. Um, at the moment, the set of 100 in a tin is coming out at about 260 quid on Amazon. I think that is on offer though. They're generally slightly more expensive than that. If you're looking for a good set of pencils to use, I would absolutely not hesitate in recommending these. They are beautiful. I will get around at some point to doing some sort of uh, live demo of these for you, like a proper review. I have worked on these though in that Christmas clock page that I've just released. So if you want to see these in action, do check that video out, which if you scroll down, it will just be a couple of back from this one. But this is the full set. The other thing um, on the expensive end of the potential Christmas presents that I would recommend is these bad boys. So these are the Colour Cubes by Sarah Renee Clark. I'm just going to unzoom us very slightly here. Get these pens and things out of shot. Here we go. So I have volume one and volume two. So they're much of a muchness. So I'll just show you some out of the um, volume one for the time being rather than unpacking everything. Now these at the moment, um, if you're in the UK like myself, um, it's quite expensive in terms of shipping to get them here, but it's a really good product. Um, at the moment, the set of two is £63 on Sarah Renee Clark's website. That does not include postage. 
or you can buy each one separately for around £38. Whether she'll have more offers on as it comes up to Christmas or the New Year, I don't know. The postage for myself to get these back to the UK was like £35, which I did think, ooh, that's quite expensive. Um, but they are coming from Australia, so you're not going to get them here for, for cheap um, prices at the moment. Now the good thing about these colour cubes, if we go back to what we were saying about the colour wheel, if like me you sometimes struggle to choose a colour palette for a page, this product could well be the answer to your question. What you have per cube is 250 of these little colour palette cards. So it might be that you are flicking through one of your books and say for example you find a page with cherry blossoms on it. This card will give you an idea of the colour palettes to use and on the back it gives you the different shades and tones so what you can do is use this to look through your own pencils find shades that match this and then you know that that is going to work on the pages that you're doing at any one time now if you feel so inclined and um, Sarah does also have I want to say that it's called the colour catalogue or colour companion it's one or one or the other I can't remember and what she's done is she's actually listed most of the major brands of pencils which ones will go with each of these cards so it kind of takes the hassle out of you thinking well this is a well and good Suzanne but how am I finding the shades that go with this for me um I don't feel like I want to be download paying money to download another part of a product when I can sit with my swatching sheets of my pencils, eyeball which colours look similar and then just work it out for myself. To me that's part of the fun. That's not for everybody though. So if you're one of these people that's like, yeah, it's going to be a bit stressful for me, Suzanne. You might want to download the thing that goes with it as well because that will really help you out. But these cards are all on different themes. So... You know, it's not like you have to find um, a Christmassy page like this to use that palette on. This may give you an idea if you see another page that's got maybe baked goods or you want a grey background or you want something that's on the red and the orange spectrum and just have a look at the shades that are on the back. They're all different themes. So some of these are, um, you know, like a vintage feel perhaps. Um, these are like ones I've pulled out that I like, so they're a little bit out of order, but my autumn palettes for leaves, more autumn palettes for leaves. But the pages like, um, say, Enchanted Forest that Johanna Basford has done, lots of tree kind of pictures. So you might want to use a palette like this, depending on what look you're going for, really, on the page. I used this one on my um, Christmas, not Christmas cake, I've got Christmas on the brain. My birthday cake page in uh, Rooms of Wonder, this particular card. In fact, let me see if I can just dig the page out to show you because I've got Rooms next to me here. You'll have to excuse the glare because I have put my protective film over it just now to protect the uh, colour transfer for the other page. So if I just tilt it this way to get the glare gone, that colour palette on here is what I've used for the inside of this cake, this background. And then I've chosen another complementary card using the colour wheel to do the outside edges and the, some of the bits on the interior. But that was the card that I've used. So you see the inspiration for the background and also the colour choices. And that's just from eyeballing um, on my swatching sheets. If I hold it next to different areas, you can see how I've got the colours to match it. And this is a great example of using that Derwent eraser to make circles. You see the little circles that I've done? So I've just colour graduated everything and then randomly put these little circles in. So that's sort of a practical example of how you can use it to influence a page that you're doing. So I left this one kind of more towards the end because this is one of the more sort of pricier things that you might want to put on your Christmas list. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. There obviously hasn't been um, the same chat and things that there normally is um, when I'm interacting with you guys live and there will be sort of more videos popping up like this over the coming months um, it's just a bit more flexible for me without it being the same time every week um, but yeah just a few ideas for Christmas 
I will link in as many of the products as I can into the description below the video. Like I said, some of the links will be Amazon affiliated. It doesn't cost you anything to use those links. It just generates a tiny amount of commission for me and it is tiny, it's only pennies. <laughs> so feel free to use those links if you so wish. Um, those of you that are in not in the UK will need to find them on your own Amazon because they're only linked to the UK site. But I hope that you've enjoyed that video. Um, I will hopefully be speaking to you again before Christmas. But if you're watching this nearer Christmas, I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you very, very much for all your support this year. So I'm going to go and undemolish this desk, which is covered in stuff. So I'll say goodbye for now. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.